that they exuded that God is in control and things are going to be all right. Well, all the evidence then said that Barak and his army did not stand a chance against Sisera and the Canaanites. But Sisera and his buddies didn't hesitate when they heard God's command to ready themselves for battle. They listened to God and they trusted God and they proved that the central reality of their lives was, and here are those words again, the personal, unalterable, persevering commitment God makes to us. And by trusting in God in uncertain and in dangerous circumstances, they defeated Sisera and the Canaanite army. And at the end of Judges chapter 5, we read that after the defeat of the Canaanite army, the Israelites lived in peace for 40 years. That's pretty good. I'm not sure in my lifetime I've lived in peace for 40 years. In fact, as I thought about it over the last week, I haven't. So that brings us to the central message that we've got in Judges 4 and Judges 5. That godly leaders and just plain ordinary people like we are, friends, frame their reality around the faithfulness and the promises of God. Yes, we all, leaders all, may experience fear and failure and doubts and disappointments. But as they listen and act, but as we listen and act on the faithfulness and the promises of God and use our courage and our faithfulness, folks, that becomes contagious. And we inspire others to have the same faith in God that we have. And that's what God asks of us. When we build our reality toward God, around God's faithfulness and God's promises, then we can leave our challenges and our anxieties and our fears for the future and all else. We can leave all that to God and focus, focus on being accountable for the opportunities that we have right this very minute right here in the presence in the world that we live. We can do what God wants us to do and is guiding us to do and we can leave the results in God's hands. He puts us out there. He tells us, shows us, helps us, gives us all we need to do it and then He brings the result. So I want us all to question ourselves this week. In troubling times, in uncertain times, who are the voices that we listen to? In whom do I place my trust? Do I listen to the media? Do I think, oh, it must be true. I saw it in Facebook. Do we listen to the talking heads in various and sundry places? No. What we have to ask, is God's voice the primary influence in our lives? Is God's faithfulness to us the central driving force, the central reality in our life? We have to ask, what would be different, friends, if the driving force of our lives was God's, and hear these words again, personal, unalterable, <laughs> persevering commitment to us? That's a powerful question. And as you think about it this week, it's going to have an impact, if you'll allow it to, on how you deal with things. So, my message has been about Deborah, and it's been out of the Old Testament. 
But I want to close with a verse out of the New Testament that comes from John chapter 14, verse 6. And I suspect every one of you can say it with me where he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. When we believe these words, particularly where he says, I am the truth, we can know exactly who we can trust. We can trust God. We can trust His Son. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.